And just for the record, please state your name for day two. Detective Jay Carpenter, J-A-Y-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Sir, yesterday when we ended for the day, um, we were at the point where we were talking about you interviewing the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, <coughs> at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection. I don't think it's being called that name, for the record. Uh, objection is overruled. Yes, I do Grounds recall that. overruled. Not relevant. Yeah, it is relevant. Your Honor, at this point, or I think last night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted into evidence, which is the defendant's statement provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. And Exhibit 81 has received permission to publish is granted. Objection. My um, notes reflect <coughs> that it's 25 minutes. That is correct. Um, let me get the exact time of it. Objection. I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Jury will disregard the statement by Mr. Brooks. He is not testifying, therefore his statements are not evidence. And my objection should be noted for the record. <coughs> Your Honor, the um, entire video is 25 minutes and 27 seconds. The state is, will be playing from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead. Clarify. We had talked about it last night a little bit. Um, what we are hearing today is the audio interview only, correct? Objection leading. Oh, overruled is foundational. She may ask it that way. Go ahead. You may answer, sir. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, he said in four to six weeks I might have to get it because it's still something's wrong. I know, I know. You bang it up before or something? Nah, just it was just the way they slammed me. Oh, okay. Hit the ground, kind of like went up. Boom, boom. That's where the knee well, came from. Knee but, as well. okay. yeah. yeah, but the shoulder, I, I know. I know something's wrong. Yeah. He said four to six weeks, the MRI won't be able to tell if anything's torn or anything like that, so. Okay. Okay. FBI, though. We, we help out our local partners all the time. This is just something that we're here to do. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, believe it or not, we, we work at NPD a lot. We, we come down here, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, like uh, the yeah, Detective Carpenter like, said, we're- Y'all you know, for real, the FBI group. That's yeah. what this says, at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm not trying to be funny, but this is the first time I've ever even seen an FBI agent in real life. Mm -hmm. Most we get that reaction from most. <laughs> no, because it's like, am I in a movie life. right now, y'all? Sure, y'all not punking and pranking me or something. Yeah, don't let, uh, you don't need to let that yeah. freak you out or anything. Right. Again, we yeah. do work. So, so we work on a task force with 
MPD quite a bit, so I'm we gonna, are. I'm gonna put my arm like this just to stretch it out, just to. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. want you to think I'm doing that crazy. You good? You good? It leaves some pressure. So good. Is right up in. Um, I'd say. No, you're good. Yeah, like she was saying, don't let the, you know, don't let, don't let them get all, don't let them make you nervous. Okay. Um, you'll be talking to me mostly and my partner a bit. No, you know, they'll ask you a little too, but. Um, just trying to get to the bottom of everything. Look, you were found basically running around in the yard. You said you grabbed dude's phone. That's no, I didn't grab it. I, well, I, actually, I don't mean you stole it. You oh, asked for it and you made a call. And that's just kind of what I'm up here to start with and, and get the background about it. If you're willing to tell me just what you're doing in the yard. You know, because obviously we have the perception we got, like I told you. You know, they said, okay, they had us write this warrant, get some of your blood. But I have one side. So what am I missing? I'm missing Darrell's side, right? I don't know what created all this, why these people are calling us, um, and I can't really clear that up, or I'd like to clear that up, but the best way to clear it up is if, you know, you're willing to talk to me about it, okay? And that's just kind of what I'm here to sit down and, and, and chill with you about. We've been, been talking to you, what, about four hours now? And we've Probably been longer. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty cool, it's been Probably pretty laid longer. back, so I'm looking to keep it that way. I'm not looking to, to pull any fast ones on you. That's why I've been straight with you to that point. I'm going to keep doing that now, right? Um, Darrell, is it D-A-R-R-E-L-L? -L? Do I have the spelling right? Yes, sir. And it's E. Edward, like full middle is Edward, yes, right? Yes, sir. Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S? Yes, sir. Okay. And just verify your date of birth then for me. 221 82. 82. So you're 39? Yes, sir. Okay. Married at all? No. no. As little as I am, I'm like, you had to slam me. Yeah, how many kids you got? Three. Three, how old are they? 18, 14, and seven. 18, 14, and seven. Yeah, yes. what do they like to do? Uh, My baby girls, they are, they into everything that's going on right now. The TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> the always Instagram. The phone, right? they, they always dance and making videos. My, my oldest daughter just started high school. Yeah. And my baby girl is, she just started the first grade, so. Yeah. so my like, son is the oldest, my, my girls are the youngest. They can like build a computer, but can't normally talk like we know how to, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're born in Milwaukee? Uh, actually, Detroit. Detroit? Yes, okay, sir. So living in Milwaukee now? Yes, sir. Grew up here. Um, we left Detroit when I was maybe, I don't even think I was walking and talking yet, so. Okay. Milwaukee's home, Wisconsin's home, born and raised. Okay. Uh, not working right now, right? No, not at the moment. No. What do you do when you're working? What do you like consider your job? Um, the last job I just had, I was working at a, um, like a sheet metal place. Okay. You know, basically just, um, they would have like these uh, like hook things. Like you just... Just basically, it's strenuous because you got to do a lot of lifting lot of and lifting. it's a lot of heavy lifting, but you basically just hanging these pieces on these hooks and they're going through the thing, they're steaming them, painting them, then they okay. come back around and then you just box them up and load them. So you're not married? No. Live, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. You live with her? No. What's her name, your girlfriend's name? Her name is Erica Patterson. E-R, how did she spell it? E-R-I-K-A. P-A... Yeah, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O. Okay, and it's 4014 North 19th Street in Milwaukee. Do I have the right address? Yes, sir. Is that an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay. What's the zip code there? Uh, 53209. Okay. Um, and last grade you completed in school? 12th. Okay. Graduated high school? Yes, sir. What school did you go to in Milwaukee? Riverside. Riverside? Yes, sir. Milwaukee Riverside. Tigers. <laughs> I see you smile. You know about Riverside, man? I heard things. Uh, we kicked y'all butt in football. Uh, it was West Dallas. Oh, no. I don't think we played Riverside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I appreciate all the cooperation and all the good dialogue we've had, you know, to this point, Darrell. Um, you know, being that you're sitting here and you know, I had, had some handcuffs on you before and all that jazz, Absolutely. you familiar with your legal rights? Yes, have I Have you am. ever had those read to you before? Yes, I have. Okay. So as you can see, they're written on this paper. So because, you know, if I was sitting here and talking to you on your couch, we wouldn't have to worry about this. But because you're here in 
not in your home. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a thing I got to read to you, okay? And again, it's just something I got to read to you before I kind of get your side or hopefully get your side here and love to hear your side. I'd like to know what the rel has to say about, okay, you know, we got some people calling us saying this, you know, um, he said, you made an before. No, I wasn't driving. Someone thought you might've been, he had to get that warrant. He ended up calling a guy just to use his phone, kind of loitering around and just, you know, how he, no, ended, up, how he ended up kind of being it. That's okay. what they say. No, 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 no I was going to say, I, I, I knocked on his door to use his yep. phone. Yep, Damn. right, but it probably wasn't him that called because he got his phone, but someone was concerned about something. So just trying to figure out what's going on down in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All I right, mean, Jerome. He kind of, you know, like I said, cool. I, I probably, that wasn't probably the best, but I was just like, I need is. to get an Uber. Yep. I have money on my cash app card. Yep. So I'm not trying to rob anybody. Sure. I'm yeah. not trying to break it any. And obviously yep. you can tell I'm not drunk. I'm not, yep. you know, under the influence of anything. So. Okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> he's what it was. Okay. All right. Um, in regards to these, Darrell, then, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? Just answer everything with a yes or no. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I just write down your reply. Um, do you understand if you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court? Yes, sir. Understanding the above rights, uh, Darrell, are you willing to speak with me, us, primarily me, I'm the one that's be doing most of the talking probably uh, I just want to know a little bit more about what's going on just a little bit because like I'm, I'm I told you I know very confused. little I just know that you know you're down in this neighborhood someone called you know they didn't know what you were doing down there and things like that so I got limited from their side but I'm looking to see you know what you have to say about it. I'm looking to see you know maybe maybe a lot of maybe the caller was just on some BS down there you know I don't know <laughs> you know, I don't know, but I can't. I can't really show the court that if I don't have, you know, if I haven't talked to you. So that's why I'm here, just to kind of see what you got to say about it. Get your side of it. You know, running around a neighborhood's not not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Right, right, you know? right, right. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have had to do that if if I made better decisions with women. Yeah, but not gonna point the finger. Sure, I'm a grown man. I make my own decisions. So. I'm not gonna point the finger at nobody. I just yeah. didn't think. Didn't think, yeah. yeah. What the hell? You want to speak with me, Darrell? Uh, not right now. So, was a decision made to speak with Mr. Brooks the following day? Being called their name, leading the witness. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. Now, when you spoke with the defendant on the 21st, what did you have some general information as to casualties from yes. the parade? Yes, I did. What information did you have at that point? At that point, not all the information was in yet, but I knew, um, as I stated in previous testimony, um, our emergency department was very full. Um, I knew there were significant injuries to many people. Um, I knew some were deceased. I did not know the exact number at that time. You had um, approximately another couple minutes of conversations with Mr. Brooks before you called it a night. Um, was he, what was the vibe that you got from him during those couple minutes? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. It's leading the witness. The objection's overruled, you may answer. I would say f friendly. I think <coughs> when you heard the, the clip there, um, Mr. Brooks jokes about Riverside and football. The individual he was talking to at that time was Detective Stern, um, as you can't obviously see him in the video. Um, 
I could sense, and I believe you can hear it in Mr. Brooks's voice in that clip, um, the FBI put him on edge. It was unusual to see them. I could sense the nervousness. He did transition as I talked to him more throughout that clip into a more normal conversational tone again. But when I was speaking with Mr. Brooks casually throughout the night, that was the type of tone um, he had with us. It was very friendly and he seemed, when it came to myself and Detective Stern, very comfortable speaking with us. Now you had stated your initial intent was to talk to him about loitering in the area that he was arrested. Do you recall that? Objection is speaking to you. Overrule, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did Mr. Brooks at all talk to you about the loitering in terms of what the focus of your investigation was that night? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name, leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, the statements he made in there, um, you know, about, you know, being in the area because he needed an Uber. Um, you know, he, he says more, you know, to us about not knowing the area of Waukesha. He, he doesn't know the streets, things of that nature, and he just needed an, an Uber to get home. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was his reasoning for, for being down there, and he stuck to that reasoning the entire time. Direct your attention then to the next day. So, strike that. That night, was he transported to a Muskego Police Department? Yes, he was. And did you go to Muskego Police Department? Yes, I did. Um, did you transport him? So it was a dual transport. Uh, Officer Leha from the Waukesha Police Department responded to Waukesha Memorial Hospital in a, in a marked squad car that has a, an, uh, an appropriate rear backseat transport compartment. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks was placed in that car, and myself and Detective Stern followed in a separate car. So once you get to City of Mosquito Police Department, do you do anything there? Objection, Lee. Overrule. You may answer. Not the first night. Myself and Detective Stern stood by while some basic medical questions that were part of Mosquito Police Department's policy as far as holding a prisoner were asked of him. Um, I was there until Mr. Brooks was placed into his cell. Once Mr. Brooks was in his cell, I explained to him that I, me personally, would be returning the next day to speak with him more and give him more information about the investigation. Did Officer Leha end up staying at the Muskego Police Department with the defendant? Objection. Respectfully to you. Overruled. Yes, he did. Why was that? Objection, Lee. Overruled. That was Muskego's request, being Mr. Brooks was... Although, so because of the transition and we did not have our own municipal lockup facility, um, we requested to use Muskego Police Departments and they allowed it. But being Mr. Brooks was technically in our custody, they requested that one of our officers stay um, there to do the monitoring and the jail checks. So do you return to the city of Muskego Police Department the next day, November 22nd, um, to speak with Mr. Brooks again? Yes, I did. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. Did you return with anyone? Um, I returned with Detective Ben Stern. Now, what was the plan for this interview? You had said the previous day the intent was to kind of start very low, just looking at loitering. Um, did you have a plan going into the interview on the 22nd? Objection. Leading. Overruled. I did. What was that plan? So the plan was different from the prior day. So the interview with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd didn't start till about a little after noon that, af that afternoon, 12, 11 p.m. to be exact. Around 8 a.m. that morning, there was a briefing with all officers that were involved where I learned some additional information. Um, one of the things I learned that morning was that there was a domestic abuse incident that had occurred between Daryl Brooks and Erica Patterson, something I was not aware of when I was with Mr. Brooks during the evening hours of November 21st. Um, there was also much more information at this point in regards to the parade incident. Um, 
as I had stated in my earlier testimony, it was very, very chaotic that first night um, between radio traffic and what I could hear going on down in the downtown. As I had stated, it was really unlike anything I've ever been involved in. But by Tuesday morning, the 22nd, we had narrowed it down to basically just Mr. Brooks, that there were not four people in this car, we were looking at one man. So he was now a suspect in the domestic abuse and driving in the parade. So I chose to begin the interview on the less serious matter, that being the, the battery charge that he was looking at with Erica Patterson. Now you said Tuesday <coughs> the 22nd. Um, <clears throat> Monday, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And um, what do you try to do when you're meeting with someone? Do you, do you try to establish any type of rapport with that person? Is that helpful? You, how did you approach this interview on the 22nd? Objection leading. Um, I'll sustain it to the form of the question. It was actually compound. If you could rephrase. How did you approach the question of Mr. Brooks on the 22nd? Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. Overruled. The witness may answer. So when I began to speak with Daryl Brooks on the 22nd, um, I began with some very light conversation. I explained to Mr. Brooks that I had more information from the previous day. I explained to Mr. Brooks that his girlfriend at that time, Erica Patterson, had made some domestic abuse allegations against him that were physical in nature. I didn't indicate to him exactly what she said he did, but that there were physical allegations. Um, I explained to Mr. Brooks that there's always two sides to a story and that, you know, a lot of times in my experience as an officer, it, it can be about perspective. There's one, there's side A, there's side B. C, so to speak, and maybe B, somewhere in the middle, can, can be your truth. Um, and I basically just implored him to be honest. I, I touched on the fact we had talked extensively the night before about things such as him enjoying baseball, him having watched the Packer game, him having been disappointed by the result of the Packer game. And in situations such as interrogations, I think it's always important to let a person know that Obviously, I'm an officer, but I'm a human being, as are they. And you want to try to not let them see that barrier and feel comfortable talking to you. I think in any interpersonal relationship in society, there needs to be rapport. And I try to establish that before getting into the specific details of the crime at hand. Now, you said that you had a briefing prior to going back to the City of Mosquito Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Did you have... Um you said you had more information about the parade incident and also the domestic incident, correct? Correct. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Next question. Did you know at that time prior to speaking with Mr. Brooks how many people had died during the parade incident? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. And how many people was that at that time? Objection, leading. Overruled. At that point, it was five. So did you confirm, again, personal information for the defendant uh, before starting the interview? Yes, I did. Did you read the or him the Miranda form like you did the night before? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 174. Now, is that the Miranda statement form that you completed on November 22nd with Mr. Brooks? Objection, leading. Yes, it is. And what time was that completed? 12, 11 p.m. Okay. Um, I what exhibit is that? 180, uh, 174. <coughs> 174? 174. Um, and did you read that form to Mr. Brooks? Objection. What did you say? Overrule. Yes, I did. And did you read that form to him in its entirety? Yes, I did. Okay. I'd ask that Exhibit 174 be moved into evidence. Objection. Brother Missy. Exhibit 174 is received. Now, when we look at Exhibit 174, it says spouse's name. It says Erica Patterson. Do you see that? Objection. Leading. Um, sustained it to the form of the question. You did not ask the publish. I did not. I just want to make sure that's what you were 
not looking to do. Correct. No. Okay. Um, <coughs> there's a spot on this form that says spouse's name. Is that filled in? Yes. And what does it say? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. It says Erica Patterson. Did he say that they were married? He did not. He said um, that was his girlfriend, however. Okay. And he indicated he had children? Objection he did. leading. It's background foundational. It's the witness may answer. The objection's overruled. Yes, he did. How many children did he have? Objection leading. Overruled. Three. Okay. And you read each of the five rights that are listed on this form? Yes, I did. And did he agree to speak with you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. I would ask that Exhibit 174 be published to the jury. Objection. Really, let me see. The exhibit's already been received. Noting your objection, it's overruled. Permission to publish is granted. <laughs> now, as that form is coming up in the jury box, just for the, the jurors to see, um, when you initially had contact with the defendant that morning, did you verify <coughs> if he had been fed? Objection. Speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. And had he been fed dinner the night before, breakfast that morning, lunch that afternoon? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he had. And was he complaining about any physical injuries? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Ah, uh, yes, he was continuing to complain about, <clears throat> excuse me, he was continuing to complain about, um, the injury to his right shoulder, um, which he still at that time was asserting occurred when um, officers at the time of his arrest body slammed him. Now with regard to the second interview, the one that took place on November 22nd, was that recorded? Yes, it was. And would it be fair to say that uh, recorded interview was four hours, 55 minutes and 30 seconds? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, that would be correct. Okay. And you've had the opportunity to listen to that interview? Yes, I have. I'm going to go through that interview um, with you. I'm not going to play um, the whole five hours, um, but just portions of that. I'll stop it during, um, during specific clips that I'm provided, providing to Ms. Gussie, and we'll talk about it. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Before you do that, I'm told our interpreter will be here momentarily, and rather than you start, I think it would be best if we just take a short break till the interpreter's here. Yes. Is the witness here? Um, I believe he was and coming at 10. Oh, we okay. That's fine. Then. Then I appreciate that additional information, then we'll keep going. Sorry for the interruption. Um, let me see if maybe he's here early. Okay. Yeah. Keep going and just let me know when the witness gets here. Okay, you can take this exhibit off the screen. If we can go to seven minutes and 30 seconds to eight minutes and 20 seconds. To eight. Now, before she starts it, um, is this the interview room? That was at the same Mosquito Police Department? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, it's paused right now, but um, who's in that room? Objection leader. <laughs> Overruled. The person in that room in the red T-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair, is Daryl Edward Brooks, the same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay. And the other two people depicted here? Uh, the person, as you would look to the screen to the left, is myself, and on the right is Detective Ben Stern. Okay. So again, going to seven minutes and 30 seconds. <coughs>
We're gonna play it. But not with sound until seven minutes and 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. So it now is at seven minutes and 30 seconds. If we can play until eight minutes and 20 seconds. Hang the metal pieces on the, um, the little machine thing that comes around. They take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and then they come back around and we just take them off the hook and just put them in the box, load them up, put them back on the truck. Oh. It was four on, three off, so that was more ideal because that's a great schedule. I, I mostly have my children the back half of the week. Sure. But since since all this, I've been having them every day. So it was like... How old are your kids? Uh, my, my son is grown. My daughter, my oldest daughter is 14, and my youngest daughter is 7. You said your son, oldest son's grown. How old is he? He's 18. Okay. They all live with you then in Milwaukee? Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't? My son doesn't. But. Okay. So initially, what were you speaking with uh, Mr. Brooks about when he was describing um, doing something with metal? Objection leading, and I do not, not consent to being called that name. Overruled as to both objections, the witness may answer. Just about work, he was, uh, Mr. Brooks was explaining a job he had had prior. Uh, he indicated he was laid off due to the pandemic. Um, so it was just general conversation about his work history. And um, he talked about his kids. Um, do you recall that? Yes. And his two youngest kids, who did he say they lived with? Objection, the Objection, the answer. Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area, and the other lives in Iowa. Okay, thank you. Now directing your attention to 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the interview, and I'd be playing that until 15 minutes and 48 seconds into the interview. It is currently at 14 minutes and 15 <coughs> seconds. Can we have those uh, timestamps again, please? Sure, 14 minutes and 15 seconds beginning to 15 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you. I'd ask that that be played at this time. Go ahead. We're not on your college set. I gotta read it, okay? Um, and I know you've had you've heard it before, so you can't understand. That. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions before I start for me? Only thing I want to know is, what in the heck am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you, kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. <laughs> Okay. Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot, you know. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's, it's not always fair to them, but that's kind of what I'm I wish they had a law to where people, can, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm gonna yeah. call and do this. Yep. Like right? that's why would you put me in that situation? And then you know we're gonna end up being together anyway. And that's yeah. Why would you do that? Trying to that's, judge that credibility. Yep, yeah. and that's that's total BS. So that's what I, I'm. That's why we're sitting in here with you to try to to siphon through, sift through the BS if that's what we got. And just go for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, All right. Fucking girl, man. I said this last night too, didn't yeah. I? She get drunk and think. Remember I kept saying that she fucking acts a fool and I'm the one that pays for it. Yep. Yeah. Can you tell the jury a little bit about this clip? Yes, so in this clip here, I'm just <laughs> explaining to Mr. Brooks um, the background of the domestic abuse allegations that, you know, officers had received from Erica Patterson um, and that I was looking to get basically clarity on that, his side of the story on that, um, have him help me understand what aspects of it may or may not be true, and um, just walk me through what had occurred between, between the two of them. Again, although we're approximately um, 15 minutes into the interview, have you mentioned anything about the parade incident or any victims? Objection. We Overruled. The witness may answer. I had not said anything about that at this point. 
And why was that? So what I wanted to do with this interview, as I stated in my earlier testimony, uh, I wanted to start with the smaller things and get to the bigger things. Um, the parade incident with the injuries of the individuals and the loss of life was obviously very serious. Um, part of what I believe as an investigator is very important is gauging credibility in the, in the interview. And one of the ways you do that is you need to be careful. Obviously, at some point, if I'm going to take Mr. Brooks to jail, I have to tell him what he's being charged with. But I want to be very careful in giving too much information early on um, so that I'm not leading him, so that I'm not giving him the opportunity based on information to create lies. Um, I want to see how he reacts to things to help me gauge whether he's being truthful. And I found, starting with the smaller aspect, and seeing how truthful he was with that could help lead me into the more serious allegations and see if he was going to be truthful about those things as well. Now, as I watched the, the snippet of the video that we showed, at one point you had indicated, you know, guys like you get, you know, get into these kind of situations with girls like that or something to that effect. Do you recall that interaction in this video? Yes, I do. What do you mean by that? Or what were, strike that, what were you trying to establish by making that statement? Again, with, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, part of what I believe is important is simply building a rapport with an individual. Again, you always have, with any individual and in any interrogation, um, there's the natural barrier that can occur with them seeing you as a law enforcement officer. Um, I've been doing this job for 18 years. Um, that was not intended on any way on my part to suggest to Mr. Brooks that everything his girlfriend was saying was a lie. I just wanted him to feel comfortable telling me the truth, whatever that truth was, um, man to man or person to person, human being to human being. Lying. Um, directing your attention to um, 30 minutes and 26 seconds and playing this clip until 40 minutes and 30 seconds um, let's do that now. Objection. Um, wasn't it just said we was 15 minutes in the interview? Why is it playing from 30 minutes? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Again, that's 3026, you said? 3026 to 4030. To 
Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I know you saw Erica yesterday in Waukesha because we talked to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come to meet with her in Waukesha, one? And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her. Where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Yeah, so, because if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met so her. What happened when you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did? Okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me. Okay, how much? Um, it was supposed to be $350. Okay. And what did she, why did she have it? Why, why was she holding well, she, it? She had been holding it for me for a few weeks now, but like I said, I hadn't seen her. She had seen it. Right, but was she holding, why did she have it? Why was she holding it for you? She was just holding it for me because I told her to hold it for me. But this was, it didn't have anything to do with, this was weeks ago she had been holding the money. And because I had no contact with her, I couldn't tell her. And my mom wasn't going to let her come to the house to bring it. Mm -hmm. And I told her, look, man, if I'm going to be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and, and get the money. But I'm not hanging out with you. I'm not having sex with you. And she was just like, oh, you want to keep, I'm like, I'm not going to do none of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that. I understand that. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. I love you to death, man. You're my baby mama. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like a hangout thing. I told her, I'm like, I'm out here. And she's like, oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, gee, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you or none of that. All right. So you told her you weren't, you weren't going to do any of that stuff. No. How did you set the meeting up? Did you did you talk to her on the phone, Facebook Messenger, text message? Cause I talked to her. She, I don't think she said anything about that. So just, I mean, if she's BS, how did you how did yeah, you cause I didn't, with her? Yeah, because I didn't. She, this is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on, one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what, that's what I'm saying. She, if she can't get in touch with me, that's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Waukesha or whatever, and I'll meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where are you at? Wait, call? Yeah. And she was just like, where are you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. Do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money. And I want to, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to hang out with you. I'm going to meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. Okay. It was still daylight. So was after that? this was, I think the game was still on. Yeah, it was on. So the game was still on. Left stuff and used to go. Yep. Okay. The game was still on. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't so, do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But yeah, that. And this is on. Your cell phone? You, the three-way call, obviously, it's your cell phone because you're not no, on the phone, right? My friend's phone. Friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to Hit her on a three-way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. Okay, I guess. So you saw her, though. Right? You met up with her. Okay. So, how did the conversation with her end? With me walking off and her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. Okay. 
when she said, "Whose car oh, did you use to get out?" She there? said, "I didn't. I didn't have a car." No, whose car did you use to get to Waukesha? My friend. My friend is the one that said he was gonna go hang out, watch the Packer game. I said, "I'm gonna go with." Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? That My friend lives in Milwaukee. So. You you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car no, did you guys use? My to friend. I just said my what friend. What type of car is you? I. I'm just trying to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to like spin me up or something. Like I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? I didn't drive at all. <laughs> what car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay, right. What kind of car is it? So here's the thing, Darrell. Okay. Um. Obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told her she's talking about some domestic related issues, okay? Um, you know, I'm, I don't know if she's on BS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling you. Hold on, you. let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get. Yeah, because you know, hold on, let me finish. You know, I don't entirely know all that, okay? I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So. I gotta step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. Don't I want you to get you all nervous, okay? But you know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I, I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, How did you get out here? Yeah. Whether you drove, someone else drove, and if so, when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just um every hour or so my boss, he knows we're out here. I just gotta call him, say, Yeah, we're talking, I'll call you back later. Just gotta step out, throw in a line with him and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. Alright? Sound good? Okay. So we done talking or no, 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 all I listen, I'm I'm willing to listen, Carpenter. You've been straight up with me. You've been straight up with me, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, I just want to know what I'm looking at, and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what am I looking at. That's I it. At the start, she called about some domestic abuse related stuff. Now I didn't talk to her myself. I told you that at the start. You said she was crazy. We talked about Y'all know that. Y'all talked yeah. to the woman. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, other I apologize. You talk. Slow down. Our officers that we listened to the interview. Slow down, Did, did she look beat up? Did she be, like, dude, Darrell, like, come, come on me. now, man. Slow down, dude. All right? We can't explain it to you if you keep talking over us. You know what I'm saying? All right? I didn't talk to her. I didn't see her. Okay? Now... Okay, with regard to that clip, sir, um, we we have a lot of talk about her, meeting her. Who Who is her? Objection, leaving. Overruled. The her in this case is Erica Patterson. So you, did you have some conversations with Mr. Brooks before this clip about his relationship with Ms. Patterson? Objection, leaving, <laughs> I do consent to be in court that name. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Now, at the end of this video, um, not the end of the video, but the end of this clip, again, he is saying, what am I looking at? Do you recall him saying that in this video? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. Was this a theme throughout this five-hour video? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, it was. <coughs> Did he... You had stated initially when he came into the room, he had complained about some shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Did that continue throughout the interview? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. So, I would say what happened is it went on and off. So at this point here, um, the interview at this point in time was what I would describe as laid back. Um, a lot of it was simply getting background about 
the overall relationship between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Um, during that time, he was fine. Um, he was moving his arms, as you could see in this clip. He wasn't complaining about pain. Um, what I noticed and made me question the legitimacy of the injury before ever actually even seeing the body cam is I noted at times of stress later in this interview as I continue to push on a vehicle um, I can see as you could see here I believe it can be seen here in this interview talking about the car made him uncomfortable complaints about the pain would suddenly come back how about the uh request to be told what he's looking at. Did you see any correlation between that and what was occurring during the interview? Objection speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, that, um, as I say, that continued throughout the entirety of the interview and you know, really at this point was a little unusual because um, right now he had been told he was looking at the domestic. The parade hadn't come up so uh, a reasonable person, I believe, at this point of the interview knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a domestic abuse incident. Um, why simply asking him how he got out here as far as transportation made him nervous was um, alarming. An example of him, you said that you had seen him using his arms a little bit in this clip, is that correct? Objection leading. Sustain us to the form of the question. Um, you had stated that, um, what observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm? He would move it from side to side. So, I mean, both his arms would come out like this and move. Um, he would make mannerisms when he was speaking with both arms that were, to me, what a person would do when they're normally conversing. And um, it would seem unusual to make those movements if he was, in fact, in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Now I'm going to just for the, let the record reflect that um, when you had indicated he would move his arms this way, you moved both your right and left arm out um, parallel to the ground at about shoulder level? Would that be accurate? Yes, it would. Okay. I'm going to show you a clip beginning at 52 minutes and 15 seconds <coughs> to 52 minutes and 42 seconds, so a very short clip. Go ahead. That, and then she makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's and like, why did you do this to me? And I, I promise you, I promise you, my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side. The woman is going to sit up there and say, I was drunk, I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything just for you to do that. Why did you do this to me? So you think she's going to come back to us? So we saw some motions with his <laughs> arms during this clip. Would that be an accurate statement? Jason, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. Can you explain to the jury what you observed? So I observed uh, Mr. Brooks move his arms to his side, above his head, um, his right arm almost fully above his head at points, um, quite frankly showing that arm seemed to have full range of motion. Now you had testified yesterday um, you had seen a video or a still shot from a video and you identified the defendant driving a red SUV. Do you recall that testimony? Objection leading. Um, overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. And when the defendant was telling you about his friend bringing him out in a tan Kia, I think he said, um, did you believe that to be true? Objection. Um, sustained. For the jury to determine credibility. Did the you witness will not answer that? Did you ever see any video of the defendant driving in a tan Kia during the time of the parade? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer that. No, I did not. Directing uh, 
the video to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds. 